Namaste dear children, I am Rega. Welcome to my channel Rega's Knowledge Hub. Today we will see NCRT Classic Science Chapter 5 Measurement of Length and Motion Part 2. Types of motion. What do you mean by motion? Motion refers to the change in position of an object over time. We have an activity here. Take an eraser and drop it from a certain height. You can see the picture here. So, an eraser is dropped from a certain height. Observe its motion. Does it move along a straight line? Yes. The eraser, when dropped from a certain height, it moved along a straight line. When an orange drops from the tree, does it move in a straight line? Yes. Have you seen the Republic Day Parade? Recall the march past of students during the parade. Do they move on a straight line path? Yes, they moved along a straight line path. When a heavy box is pushed, it may also move along a straight line. You can see pictures here. An orange is dropped from the tree. Then there is a march past of students. Then a heavy box is pushed by a student. These are examples of linear motion. When an object moves along a straight line, its motion is called a linear motion. So, when an object moves along a straight line, its motion is called a linear motion. Identify such linear motion in your surroundings. A car moving on a straight road. A ball rolling across a field, a train traveling along a straight track. They are examples of linear motion. But do things always move along a straight line? No, you might have enjoyed playing on swings and merry-go-rounds. Are these types of motion also linear motion? We will see. Now we will see circular motion. See this merry-go-round. This is an example for circular motion. Let us do an activity. Tie an eraser or a potato at one end of a thread. Hold the other end of the thread with your hand and whirl it. Whirl it means to spin rapidly. A whirl is a quick circular movement. Okay. Then observe its motion. Is the motion of the eraser the same as that of a merry-go-round? Yes, when an object moves along a circular path, its motion is called a circular motion. So, when an object moves along a circular path, its motion is called a circular motion. Let us do another activity. Tie an eraser or a potato at one end of a thread. Hang the eraser by holding the other end of the thread. See the picture here like this. Keep your hand steady. Then using the other hand, take the eraser slightly to one side and then release. Similar to the motion of a swing. Does it start moving to and fro? Is its motion similar to the motion of a swing? Yes. When an object moves to and fro about some fixed position, its motion is called oscillatory motion. So, what is oscillatory motion? When an object moves to and fro about some fixed position, its motion is called oscillatory motion. So, in this figure, you can see a boy swinging. This is an example of oscillatory motion. Let us do an activity. Take a thin metal strip of about 50 cm long. See this picture? You can see a thin metal strip. Hold its one end pressed to a table. You may use a few books or a brick to hold it. Here some books are used to hold the strip. Press the free end of the strip slightly and let it go. Here you press it slightly and let it go. Observe the motion of this end of the strip. Does it move up and down? Yes. This is also an example of oscillatory motion. 
If an object repeats its path after a fixed interval of time, its motion is said to be periodic. That is, when an object is in circular motion, it moves along the circular path again and again. An object in oscillatory motion also repeats its motion while moving to and fro. So, both circular and oscillatory motion are periodic in nature. So, periodic motion is a type of motion that repeats itself after a fixed interval of time. This interval is known as the period of the motion. So, both circular and oscillatory motion are periodic in nature. For example, a pendulum swinging back and forth. It is an example of periodic motion. Let us identify. Look at the picture of a children's park or visit a children's park. Observe different kinds of motions. Classify them as linear, circular or oscillatory motions. List them in table 5.4. Give your justification for why you put each in a certain category. So, picture of a children's park is given here. You have to identify different kinds of motions. And classify them as linear motion, circular motion and oscillatory motion and also give reasons. Here you can see a seesaw, merry-go-round, then a swing, then you can see slide. Swing, oscillatory motion moving to and fro. A swing exhibits oscillatory motion because it moves back and forth repeatedly about its equilibrium position. Equilibrium position means where the rope is vertical. Okay. So, a swing exhibits oscillatory motion. Next, we have seesaw. Seesaw also oscillatory motion. It is moving to and fro. A seesaw exhibits oscillatory motion because a child on a seesaw moves up and down at a constant speed repeating the motion. Then we have merry-go-round. Merry-go-round exhibits circular motion rotating in a circular path. A merry-go-round exhibits circular motion because the people riding on it move in a circular path. Then we have slide. A slide is moving down in a straight path. So it is it exhibits linear motion. Summary. The international system of units, SI units, has been adopted by countries as standard units of measurement. So, SI units, they are standard units of measurement. The SI unit of length is meter. Its symbol is M. Then, 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter. 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter, 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter. When distance is stated with respect to a fixed object or point, then this point is called a reference point. An object is said to be in motion if its position changes with respect to a reference point with time. When an object moves along a straight line, its motion is called a Linear motion. When an object moves along a circular path, its motion is called a circular motion. When any object moves to and fro about any fixed position, its motion is called a oscillatory motion. Let us enhance our learning. Some lengths are given in column 1 of table 5.5. Some units are given in column 2. Match the lengths with the units suitable for measuring those lengths. So, distance between Delhi and Lucknow is measured in terms of kilometer. Then, thickness of a coin in terms of millimeter. Then, length of an eraser in terms of centimeter. Then, length of school ground in terms of meter. Read the following statements and mark true or false against each. The motion of a car moving on a straight road is an example of linear motion. True, it is an example of linear motion. Any object which is changing its position with respect to a reference point with time is said to be in motion. Yes, it is also true. 
1 kilometer is equal to 100 centimeter is it true it is false 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter so what about 1000 meter 1000 meter is equal to 1000 into 100 that is 1 lakh centimeter so third statement is false 1 kilometer that means 1000 meter is equal to 1 lakh centimeter which of the following is not a standard unit of measuring length millimeter centimeter kilometer hand span standard units are millimeter centimeter kilometer hand span is not a standard unit for measuring length because it varies from person to person search for different scales or measuring tapes at your home and school find out the smallest value that can be measured using each of these scales. Record your observations in a tabular form. See, 15 centimeter ruler. This one you can find in your geometry box. Using this scale, the smallest value you can measure is 1 millimeter. Then measuring tape, it's also 1 millimeter. Cloth measuring tape, the smallest value is also 1 millimeter. Suppose the distance between your school and home is 1.5 km. Express it in meters. So, distance between school and home is 1.5 km. You have to convert this into meters. So, 1 km is equal to how many meters? 1000 meters. 1 km is equal to 1000 meters. So, what about 1.5 km? 1.5 km is equal to 1.5 into 1000 that is 1500 meters. So, the distance between school and home is 1.5 km which is equal to 1500 meters. Take a tumbler or a bottle. Measure the length of the curved part of the base of glass or bottle and record it. For this, Wrap a flexible measuring tape around the curved base of the tumbler or bottle to measure its circumference. You need a flexible measuring tape. Okay. So, like this, you can measure the circumference. So, here you can see it is around 8 centimeter. See, this is around 8 centimeter. So, length is 8 centimeter. Measure the height of your friend and express it in meters, centimeters and millimeters. See in centimeters, height is 140, 140 centimeter. So, to convert to meter, how do you convert centimeter to meter? Divided by 100, 140 divided by 100, that is 1.40 meter. Then, how do you convert centimeter to millimeter? To convert centimeters to millimeters, multiply by 10. So, 140 centimeter is equal to 140 into 10, that is 1400 millimeter. You are given a coin. Estimate how many coins are required to be placed one after the other lengthwise without leaving any gap between them to cover the whole length of the chosen side of a notebook. Verify your estimate by measuring the same side of the notebook and the size of the coin using a 15 centimeter scale. Suppose we have a book like this. Then we have a scale. We can measure the book like this lengthwise that is here it is around 8 centimeter we can place coins like this see so the length of the book is 8 centimeter diameter of the coin is 2 centimeter so number of coins required to be placed one after the other lengthwise without leaving gap between them is 8 
divided by 2 that is 4 coins. Give two examples each for linear, circular and oscillatory motion. Linear motion. A train traveling along a straight track. A car moving on a straight road. Then circular motion. The earth revolving around the sun. A car wheel turning. Oscillatory motion. A pendulum swinging. A child on a swing. Observe different objects around you. It is easier to express the lengths of some objects in millimeter, some in centimeter and some in meter. Make a list of three objects in each category and enter them in table 5.6. See table 5.6 sizes of objects around us. Size in millimeter, centimeter, meter. We have to write objects, three objects each. See for millimeter. Thickness of a paper. We can measure thickness of a paper in terms of millimeter. Then diameter of a coin. Size of a grain of rice. These objects can be measured in terms of millimeter. Then what about centimeter? Length of a pencil. Width of a book. Size of a phone screen. These items can be measured in terms of centimeter. Then meter. Length of a room, height of a door, length of a cloth. These things we can measure in terms of meter. A roller coaster track is made in the shape shown in figure 5.19. See this is a roller coaster track. A ball starts from point A. See from this point, point A and escapes through point F, this point. Identify the types of motion of the ball on the roller coaster and corresponding portions of the track. A to B, see this path A to B, we have linear motion because the ball moves straight. Then from B to E, see this path B to E, circular motion because the ball moves along the loop. Then from E to F, see this from E to F, linear motion because the ball moves straight. Tasni wants to make a meter scale by herself. She considers the following materials for it. Plywood, paper, cloth, stretchable rubber and steel. Which of these should she not use and why? The name should not use stretchable rubber because it lacks the necessary precision and stability for accurate measurements. It will stretch or contract leading to inconsistent measurements. So she cannot use stretchable rubber because our measurements will not be accurate. The rubber may stretch or contract. So, the measurements will be inconsistent. Children, if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. We will see in the next video. The links for different subjects are given in the description box. Please visit. Thank you.